Good morning, North America. Welcome to Church Talk TV. Lively talk about life, church, and church life. I'm your co-host, Dr. Bill Tenney Britton, and I'm joined as usual by my co-host, Dr. Chris Tenney Britton, and we're broadcasting from our studio in Columbia, Missouri, the heartland of America. Say good morning, Chris. Well, good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome to Church Talk TV. Chris and Bill Tenney Britton here today to talk to you about a, a subject that we don't tend to talk much about. Oh. We want to talk about the most important room in your church. So we have a little quiz to start us off today. What do you think is the most important room in your church? At least when it comes to visitors. Yes, that's that's the definer there. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, so, so what do you think? So I'll give you a hint. In research done by the Effective Church Group yeah. a couple of years ago, yeah. and I'm, I guess it hasn't changed Pre-COVID, yeah. Pre-COVID, but I'm yeah. guessing it oh hasn't changed. Oh my gosh, changed. yeah. <laughs> I think it's going to be a little bit more now. Yeah, really. Yeah, yeah. When a guest leaves, first time guest, leaves your church, this room is the one that is most often spoken about first when they leave. What room do you think that might be? Now, I, my guess would be, Wow, they've got a coffee station. So they would be talking about that coffee nook or or the lobby or the fellowship hall or or maybe the nursery if you have children or the worship center. <coughs> Wrong. All I do. <coughs> None of those are what they normally average talk about when they walk out. Do you know what that room is? It's the restroom. That's right. If you guessed the <laughs> restroom, you'd be right. And you'd probably got your jaw going. What? what? Are you surprised? The restroom? <laughs> yeah, really? Now, now, here's the deal. is that It doesn't make any difference. They talk about your restrooms if they're really, really nasty or if they're really, really awesome. <laughs> that, you know, if, if you do one or the other, either one, they're going to talk about it. You know, do you see? There was no toilet paper in my stall in the restroom. Or, you know, I mean. You, you, Ooh, did you see all the toilet paper? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and, well, and, and in, you, you know this. When you go yeah. to grocery stores or some store and you right. go to the restroom and you go, oh, same thing for the church. Well, yeah. And I'm thinking how many stories have you heard or maybe you've seen of, of people, uh, usually women, walking down the hallway with toilet paper stuck on their shoe. <laughs> There's a reason they have toilet paper stuck on their shoe. So, 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 yeah, so let's, the, let's go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's, here's the deal. Is, is you're gonna, I know you're surprised, or at least some of you are surprised. And the question is, why is that the most uh, talked about room in your church? Well, because it does two things. Number one, it speaks volumes about your church's priorities. You know, go ahead. Right. Well, it, <laughs> exactly. It does. And it, it we might think it's a small detail, right? Right. But, but it does speak loudly about detail, you know. And, and I think when they're, and we're going to talk about this in a moment, about how to make our bathrooms, wow, bathrooms, um, something to talk about. <laughs> uh, yeah. In a positive way. Who would ever, ever think, you know, that we'd be talking about bathrooms? But an indelicate yes. subject for church talk. Yeah. <laughs> Well, maybe not, because it is so important. It and, is. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, you know, but to have those special little something in your bathroom for people who are church shopping or just checking around, this is another one of those, oh, that speaks louder than we'd ever, ever, ever think it could. It makes the biggest impression, uh, number one, because of its sense. And, and, and that, that okay. you know, your olfactory, I think I pronounced that right. Yeah, you did. You know, the, your olfactory uh, uh, sense is tied to so much in your brain. They've done major research. You know, when you walk into your grandparents' house and you, yeah. ah, yes, that's what my grandparents' house smells like. It floods you with yeah. great memories. Well, you know, if you walk into a restroom and it smells like a locker room, Different kind of memories, you know? <laughs> well, when we were talking about this and we were going through our notes, I said, when I just, I read what we just talked about there and the scent, uh, I said, it brings back to me this memory from about eight years ago, seven or eight years ago, where uh, I did a visit to this church. I think you were with me uh, that day. Anyways, went there, um, uh, church out of the way, and I went into the bathroom and they were having trouble with their... Uh, um, sewer Desert. sanitary system. And so they were having people put the toilet paper into the garbage can and uh, obviously oh. had not changed the garbage oh. can for weeks.
weeks. I, yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm doing this to you. But you know, you can smell it before you got to the bathroom. And if we had not had to travel so far to get to that church, rural, I would not. Church, yeah, yeah, I would not have gone into that bathroom. But it was all I could do to keep from needing to use that bathroom from some other reason, in which case I would have gone outside. And I told him when it was time to go, I said, we have to leave. We have to leave now. I really have to go to the bathroom. So, yeah. <laughs> All right. So, so how, how to wild your guests. Right, okay, we're going to talk about how to wild your guests, but I want to I hear. Um, I worked at the church some time ago, uh, a, a church in Missouri. And this church, when we did the evaluation, we looked at their restrooms and there was some issues. And one of the things that this church took very seriously. In fact, this is the church that went from uh, the average of about 11% of their uh, member or guests returning to over 75% of first-time guests returning. They remodeled their restrooms to the point where it, the number one comment by, by guests outside, inside, this is where we began doing the research, was, is, is this, wow, what an incredible restroom. In fact, they, they picked up the motto for a while that don't go anywhere else. <laughs> but it, they, they, they really did. The, their restrooms were like, wow. So here's some, here's some things we want to yeah. offer you to on how to wow your guests with an incredible restroom, which again, speaks volumes of what you mm -hmm. find important. If you, if you find this room important and you do what you need to do to make this room wow worthy, yeah. then, then people go, will just take that um, their impression there and transfer it to the whole church. Sure. Well, so, so, yeah, this yeah, is important, important right. stuff. And it strikes me that, um, well, depending, maybe not, but more people, of course, are going to use your restroom than are going to use your nursery. And we know generally the speaking, importance yeah. of, uh, of the nursery. So, you know, let's, even though they're small, generally, let's boost them up. And, and to deal with my just rather sickening, yucky uh, <laughs> example, yeah, uh, um, deal with your odors first. Go in there, go midweek uh, and check it out. What kind of Odors. I can't say that word. Odors. Scents. Or, scents. Odors. Is, yeah. Odors. Scents odors and smell scents. nice. So you've got to uh, you've got to deal with that. You uh, of course uh, you know one thing we've learned uh, through a pandemic is uh, sanitation right. and things being clean and sanitized. And so there's a scent that goes with that. One of my friends says she cleans her bathroom with bleach because she knows that it's clean. And anybody who walks in there, uh, so that may be where you are. You may be wanting that very clean scent but it, it could be and, and, and it's more than just keeping it clean keeping mm -hmm. it clean is important but you know plumbing issues and whatnot can create a real problem so yeah. deal with this uh, and older uh, restrooms often the the fixtures and the 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 ring there's a, and those of you who are plumbers you don't talk about the toilet ring and other things have become so soiled yes, and what you can't yes, that yes, you yes, may yes. have to do some extra work to get right. there but you've got it, it can't smell uh, as if you stop by a one, one of the chemical toilets by the highway. Mm -hmm. it, it can't smell like that. It can't smell like a locker room. You need it to right. smell really nice. The odor, right. th there can be no odors, but you do want scents. And yeah. I, I want to say something about that. You because, go ahead, because I'm because going to if you the, don't. There. Because scents are important. We often, you go into a, I, I, I use this analogy a lot, or I find this a lot. I guess it's not an analogy. I walk into a restroom and they'll have the little odor maker things, and it'll smell like, for all the world, like those little cherry lollipops that had yeah. strings on them that you used to get at the doctors when you behave. Well, I'm going way back. I know. Sorry. But it, it just smells like this cherry, whatever. And it's like, okay, that's better than smelling in the locker room, 100%. But you have lots of options today about scents. And women's restrooms should smell like a women's restroom. And a guy's room should not smell, smell like the women's. And I know I'm being generous. Get over it. Um, the bottom line is, is your, your, um, your, the, the men's room shouldn't smell like a locker room. But use a men's scent. I went to a... Um, uh, what was the name of the but a, 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 a yeah a, a a sporting goods store yes. and went to the men's men's room and they had an evergreen scent and it was like oh that's perfect a for guys but b for this store it was like exactly yeah. perfect you know so you can imagine as consultants and we're used to looking at all these things there are so many times we've 
we've looked to make sure there's nobody like in a woman's bathroom, no other women there or in a men's men, bathroom. Right? And we'll be taking pictures and we'll go, no, pictures don't do justice. Come here. You have to see this for yourself and, you know, and showing off. And yes, scents are, are a huge piece of that. I want to say with scents, though, you know, you talked about your cherry lollipops. Right. And where does that take you? To the doctor's right, office, it right? It, it Not right. always a ple my my childhood doctor office visits were very pleasant. So that's what came to me. But there are also uh, now I know we have this ongoing personal conversation around lavender, and and that's not. But there are guy uh, scents that help to um, uh, to calm, calm right? right? And so what better place than in a restroom when you're nervous on top of that, or you're feeling embarrassed by what you might have to do in that bathroom, than to have one of those calming scents there for you. Right, right? exactly. So, so deal with orders. Deal with orders. orders. Okay. Number two, clean and sanitized. I mean, we shouldn't have to say much more than that. It needs to be clean um, on Sundays or during worship days. You know, someone needs to be checking yeah, the restrooms yeah, yeah, at least yeah, every yeah, yeah. half hour, yes. just making sure that they're okay. Um, and then the other piece that goes to me, anything you want to say on clean and sanitized? No, I, I right. agree with you totally. Well stocked. You know, you should never run out of toilet paper. <laughs> Ever. I finished you should, this is where we have. Yeah, I'm you, sorry. You, you shouldn't run out of paper towels. You shouldn't run out of soap. You know, this stuff needs to be checked on Friday or Saturday before to make sure it's not just, oh, well, that's good enough. Good enough is not enough. It, you got to make sure that there's going to be a well stocked restaurant because there's nothing worse than having, never mind. You just, you, you, you know, know what, what it is. is. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. yeah. So, you know, well stocked. Right. Please. Yes. Make sure it's happening. And, and so many churches don't. I'm sorry, but it's true. Uh huh. All okay. Right. So, you already touched on uh, uh, scents that are gender appropriate. Well, we're going to toss out there decorating gender appropriately. That, uh, you know, uh, you mentioned that sporting goods store. I remember that. Well, that I want to say, we have, here's, here's a picture. I mean, this is what the restroom looks like. Yeah. What do you think, guys? It's like, I wowed me to the point of, why can't churches be that way? Well, some churches are. Sorry, I interrupted. Right. No, Go you're, on. you're spot on. I'm glad you've got that picture <laughs> up there. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, and I'm not even going to touch, uh, I don't want us to go into details about what that might look like, but you've got people who know what that looks like. Ask men, ask men that don't go to your church, uh, go to, you know, maybe your office or somebody else's office. How is, how is that decorated? Uh, I was fortunate enough in one of the churches I served to have an interior decorator oh, nice. who uh, helped with my office, but also with our restrooms. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. So and we, uh, just, just for, for um, yep. equality. Here's a here's an incredible women's restroom, and notice that they have the sitting room there and everything. It was this was like I walked in there and go, wow, this is nice. But and again, gender appropriate. Um, I've been in a, I was in a church where the uh, men's restroom that was in the Midwest, and they had John Deere and um, yeah, caterpillar yeah, pictures hanging on thinking. the walls yeah. in the guys' room, and it was like, yeah, they get it. They get it. You know, you don't have flowers and little lacy things in the guys' room. Sorry, it's just not. Make it if you want a wow factor, you're not hurting anything if it's decorated gender neutral, whatever. But if you really want a wow, wow. factor, go yeah. the extra mile and, and make it like they go, Cool, oh. this is awesome. Well, and all of this is really easy. I, you right. know, again, another church I consulted with uh, a couple of years ago that was something uh, their secretary there took to heart. She wasn't even a member of the church, but she was like, yeah. And she got with another woman. They donated, you know, what it was going to take. And they made this incredible Zen room, uh, you know, and for a women's bathroom, think about putting a chair, trying to figure out where right. a chair might be for nursing mothers or, uh, you know, grandmothers who, uh, mothers, whoever that need to sue the child. Some of you may be saying, well, what about the dads? Cool. Put a chair within the men's bathroom too. That's that's okay. And I, I want to just say this one more piece right. as we're talking about sense and gender and whatnot. Think about your soap choices oh, good as well, yeah, yeah, right? Good idea. And yeah. and we were talking in you uh, earlier, and you mentioned Gojo. You know, yeah, you Gojo put that soap. in yeah. for the guys. And and I told him that you know, in a lot of church bathrooms or in a lot of churches, you have people that sell Avon or you know themselves stock up on on certain products, and that they bring those to the church, and so. You'll have, I don't know, um, Jade something or another um, uh, something. Anyways, it doesn't matter. Uh, that it, it, that are in there in the bathroom. So do the same for the men's bathroom. Put, put it, and again, I, the first time I saw that, I thought, wow, that is really cool. And every time I go into a restroom, what comes to mind is, yeah, 
people really care here. Right, exactly. Right? So, okay. so again, uh, it's soap that doesn't smell like rose, yeah. roses when you walk out of the restaurant. Can we go <laughs> to, yeah, to, yeah, go ahead. Okay, go and uh, so I want to talk again about women's bathrooms. Um, get a basket, you know, it doesn't have to be big, it can be kind of small, and put some hygiene tools, if you will, hygiene products into there. You know, it might be nice to have a single-use comb. Um, my grandson, our grandson, went to the orthodontist the other day and they gave, uh, said, will you brush your teeth? And here were all these little toothbrushes, right? Wisps. We need stock. Uh, wisps are a kind of toothbrush that are just little. It has the toothpaste in it. Put a, some wisp in there. Right. Um, uh, so combs, toothbrushes. Samples of, sample of scents. S scents. Yeah. You know, you, you oh, yeah. The that's nice. For, you know, guys and gals. Different yeah. Terms, right. Like this hand. If you were to go to bath. Bath and Body Works, and you get their soap. You um, usually right. have a matching sanitizer. So maybe you get the really great uh, deal on those, and they match whatever your soap is. And then right. people might say, wow, I really like that soap. And there it is. And you could put a note here. These are for you. Right. Uh, please take, do not leave. <laughs> right. Yeah. And sanitary products, ladies, please get sanitary uh, products in there. Okay. okay so if you're going to do, do some remodeling, it, and there's sometimes you need to do some remodeling. Um, you know, if you have the old fashioned little taps on your sinks that are, you know, little tiny things like this that go like that, yeah. replace either the whole tap or replace at least the handle so that you can do the elbow taps. Um, or make sure that there's, uh, that you have um, um, paper towels like right there so you can grab a paper towel to turn it on or off. There's yeah. nothing worse yeah, than yeah, yeah. Um, say The other thing is is location of wastebasket. Yeah, there should you. be a wastebasket immediately on the other side of the door, on the outside, so that those of us who are in, in a world of COVID and pandemic, you know, and flus and et cetera now, um, that this higher understanding, people are using paper towels to grab the, the handle of the door to open it. Yeah. And if you're going to have that, you got to have a place to throw the, the trash and it needs to be outside the door, not trying to turn back and toss it in and dart out the door. A, a trash can right there so you can drop it in. Okay. Well, let me say though, this is what I see in the women's bathrooms and I, we can talk later about why, why that why might be. Right. Well, I'm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but we, uh, um, the, the trash can, not a round one, but a flat one, tall, uh, kind of a little taller than a kitchen garbage can that is right by the door. So you open it with your paper towel, you throw it right in there. So the round barrel doesn't um, get in the way. Um, and again, uh, in the hallway, my concern is that somebody might trip on it. They might yeah, it can't toss be in the it way, over. But it, yeah, bottom so line is if, when it, you get outside or inside, whatever, yeah, so it's right got to be there, right there. Choo -choo, boom. Right, exactly. Right. So that they can open it. Right. Now, if, you, if that's not convenient, and sometimes the, the space isn't convenient, yeah, there are things you can put on the door that you can open with yeah. your foot and so you know and that's probably pretty inexpensive and that's a, a nice way again it says to the world we care about your health um going along the same same yeah, route please. is outside of your restroom should be a you know like one of those purell sanitizing stations um so that when you come out eat, whether you've washed your hands or not please do um you know there's sanitary uh purell dispensers right there so you can do that going in going out etc just to help people to feel better just in case you forget to use the paper towel yeah, right? exactly yeah. exactly right yeah. exactly right yeah. okay so anything so, else to add um, keep your mirrors clean um, yeah. You know, and wipe yeah. down again every half hour during during worship. Yeah, that's what I really want to come back. And you said wipe down. Uh, so there is something about taking sanitizer, you know, and right. wiping down right. uh, those handrails. And and be sure, too, that you wipe down the, uh, that you wash off, dry. That's why I want to say it. you dry the sinks that, uh, you know, sinks can get really counters. well. Yeah, th that's what I meant. I'm sorry, the counters. Right. But the sinks is a good idea, right. too. Yeah. yeah. And get that toilet paper that is, and paper towels. That is a Keep huge piece. Right. Yeah. One last thing is I'm talking to the church members here. Okay. Not just the pastors, but pastors too. Your custodian isn't the only one responsible for the bathroom. If you walk into that bathroom and it isn't up to snuff, you deal with it. Yeah. You don't wait. You don't go report right. it. Deal with it. Remember that scripturally, we are servants. And in scripture, that's actually slave. Uh -huh. And so that's, that is your job. It is our job. It is everyone's job to make sure the restrooms are where they need to be. So don't call it that, hey, someone needs to come do this. You do it. Yeah. Let me just put this. Um, you know, we talk about the church being God's house and 
over and over again, I think from hospitality to everything that we do, if somebody comes to your house, what do you want? How do you want to take care of that? And, and many of us, if not most of us, uh, part of cleaning our house when we have guests coming is the bathroom. Right. And we want that looking good. So when we're in God's house, we're the caretakers, right? It's where we, we have been charged uh, with the responsibility for his house. Then we have a responsibility for the bathroom rooms as well. So, so if, if you yeah. haven't picked up on this, hospitality is a really big deal for us because the number one reason guests do not return yeah. to a church is because of hospitality faux pas. And we're out of time, we but I want to share with you that if you want to find out more, lots more about hospitality and including this topic and many others, we have the church hospitality video set. It's 24 bite-sized sessions, 10 minutes approximately each that cover every hospitality issue that you can imagine from restrooms, to signage, from nursery to ushers and everything in between. Um, and you can grab it at churchhospitality.us slash video. Hey, uh, this has been a great episode. Yeah, I hope you. it's helpful, a little indelicate, but hey, you know, it is what it is. And it is truly the most important room in your, in your church. So, yeah, hey, great. we're out of time. We'll you see you are. next week. Have a great week. Bye-bye. <laughs>